This is the target used on an unusual gunnery range at Schilling Air Force Base. Controlled from a tower overlooking the range, the prop-powered drone aircraft is launched from a circular pad. When sufficient speed is built up, the drone jumps from its carriage and heads for the sky. The 20 millimeter radar controlled stinger that is the tail defense of the B-47 will try to slap it down. Operation of the weapon is co-pilot responsibility. This training keeps him qualified. Traveling at over 200 miles per hour, the radio controlled drone can do some pretty tight maneuvering, which keeps the co-pilot busy with his radar scope. Like most small target aircraft, the drone can be recovered, repaired, and flown again. The well-regulated range keeps the targets coming. Radar locks the guns on target, and the co-pilot waits the proper instant to fire. On target. A good job. The tiny 12-foot wingspan of the drone and its swift maneuvering make it no cinch to hit. Not too bad a shape. A few holes to plug and this one will fly again. Here at Schilling, all B-47 co-pilots in SACS 8th Air Force must qualify once each year in the use of the radar control tail defense weapon. Congratulations, Captain. You're now a full-fledged, radar-controlled, 20-millimeter dead-eye. From a picturesque community in Germany's Ruhr Valley comes a story that had its beginning a decade and a half ago. It was in 1943 that Mrs. Theodore Hildebrand found a small Bible which had belonged to Tech Sergeant Billy Wheeler, who lost his life in the air war over Europe. It was Mrs. Hildebrand's desire that the New Testament be returned to the dead man's mother, and in a short time her wish was fulfilled. In the office of 12th Air Force Commander, Major General Chester McCarty, the World War II talisman comes home to Billy's mother, now a widow, Mrs. Susie Wheeler of Easterly, Texas. With Mrs. Wheeler, a grandson who maintains the family's Air Force tradition. Across many miles and many years, kindness, goodwill, and a symbol of faith and belief in the freedom for which young Billy Wheeler died. This is a telerometer used by the Air Photographic and Charting Service to electronically survey wilderness sites for missile launching bases. The swiftness required for our supersonic age has necessitated doing away with the horse and buggy time-consuming survey methods of the past and to make use of new developments in electronics. Previously, survey teams have had to knock down foliage and underbrush to clear the line of sight for the optical transit. This will be no more. No more chopping and clearing. No shouting or waving. No foot-by-foot -foot measurement to learn the distance between two points. The optical transit, the tape, and the surveyor's pole are a part of the past when it comes to accurate measurement of distances needed by the Air Force today. APCS survey teams now use the telerometer, a master unit is set up here, and at a selected point some miles distant, a slave unit will be set up facing the master unit. Humidity, barometric pressure, and temperature are recorded. For a critical computation must be made on the microwave signals which are returned by the slave unit. The travel time of electromagnetic waves between the two instruments can be computed into true distance. In fog or rain, through foliage, both day and night, this team can produce in half an hour what formerly took six men a week of hard labor. And old science keeps pace with the age of missiles. USS Cape Esperance docks at Yokosuka. 
Tied to the flight deck, literally a boatload of F-100s destined for tactical units in the Far East. The planes look almost like models in their protective plastic cocoons. No time is lost in getting them on their way. Dock hands dispatch the heavy fighters as easily and as gently as a crate of eggs. From the carrier to the dock and then onto a barge which will carry the F-100s downriver to Kizarazu Air Base where the real work begins. With a great deal of assistance, the Super Sabres shed their skins in their first step of getting ready for squadron duty. Next, a good scrub down. And a good healthy steam bath. After a quick check of systems, the F-100s are on their way for assignments to combat ready organization throughout the Far East. The United States Air Force salutes the diamond anniversary of the Civil Service Act. Back in 1883, when the Civil Service Act was signed, we didn't have an Air Force. But that act was the basis for a merit system which has contributed significantly to the growth and strength of the Air Force, just as it's helped to bring about better service from other departments of the government. Civilians constitute a quarter of the manpower resources of the Air Force. Serving in over 1,000 locations throughout the world, they work in almost every occupation found in private industry. They are competent and devoted workers, worthy of the faith which you and the Air Force have in them. The Air Force and the nation salutes the civil service, a proven merit system which stands as a cornerstone of responsible government in the United States. Forbes Air Force Base, Civil Air Patrol cadets knuckle down to learn some important survival lessons. Tutored by trained Air Force survival instructors, these youngsters may someday put the knowledge they gain here to use in their own hometown in case of nuclear attack or natural disaster. Classroom instruction is put to practice in the field as these boys and girls begin a trek into the wilderness, where for two days they'll live by primitive means. The study and experience of Air Force survival experts are well absorbed by these young people. They'll go back home to their own CAP units and instruct others in the rudiments of survival and civil defense against nuclear attack. The Civil Air Patrol, an active auxiliary of the United States Air Force, by word and by action, will carry the lessons of survival across the country, wherever CAP units are located. Its youthful determination will make our nation stronger through civil preparedness, ready to meet any emergency. day of ceremony and dedication as Pine Castle Air Force Base near Orlando is renamed in honor of Colonel Michael N.W. McCoy, former commander of the 321st Bombardment Wing. The precision flying Thunderbirds thrill the throng of spectators who are on hand to witness the dedication of McCoy Air Force Base and to view the displays of latest Air Force weapons. Second Air Force Commander, Major General John P. McConnell, presents Colonel McCoy's widow with the Distinguished Service Medal, awarded posthumously to her husband for his exceptionally meritorious service as commander of the 321st Bombardment Wing. Colonel McCoy lost his life in the line of duty October 9, 1957. 
pioneer airman, exceptional leader, brilliant tactician. Colonel Mike McCoy will be remembered so long as men fly planes. In the dark jerseys, a hard spiking crew from Hickam Air Force Base who've caught just about all the marbles in this year's service volleyball tournaments. Starting out by winning the pack half crown, these wiry athletes have chopped up opponents like a thrashing machine. In the USAF Worldwide Tournament, the Hickam team ground over opponents, never being pressed beyond two games to win a set. Anybody who's played volleyball out on the beach or behind the barracks knows that this is volleyball at its very best. After winning the Air Force title, the Hickamites go on to the all-service tourney and continue their winning ways. In the final game of the all-service contest, they down Los Alamitos Naval Air Station 15-1, 9-13, and 15-2 to gain the Armed Forces Volleyball Crown. Cargo Master, new official name for the C-133. A fully assembled four ballistic missile is about to go aboard. This is actually not a big load for the Cargo Master. It's designed to haul the giant Atlas fully assembled and will be able to handle the upcoming Titan intercontinental ballistic missile. The turboprop powered C-133 can carry twice the payload of any other military plane now in service. The soon to be produced C-133B, a more powerful version of the Cargo Master, will be able to haul over 50,000 pounds non-stop across the Atlantic at an average speed of 320 miles per hour. The Cargo Master makes possible intercontinental logistics for intercontinental missiles.